Hello, in this presentation, we will discuss the discussion question of why don't we record interest at the inception of a loan? Another way this essay question could be asked is just simply, what is interest? What is interest expense? In order to answer this question, we need to consider, you know, how does interest expense happen? How does it accumulate? How is interest used? within the recording and then of course how do we record that interest expense and what is going to be the effect on the financial statements why this question is a bit of a problem is because the idea of interest one can be a bit abstract and when we first see interest within the recording of a problem especially within a comprehensive problem or even when with a short answer question we often see something like a loan. We're going to take the loan out. It's going to be a $10,000 loan. We're going to make so many payments and the interest rate is going to be 5% or something like that. And when we record the payment, then it's very easy for us to start getting confused on the recording of the loan and think that we have to do something with that 5% interest at the point in time that we are recording the loan instead of just doing what the actual uh, transaction is when we first record the loan which would just be a debit to the cash if we got cash for the loan if we took if we got a 10,000 loan for cash and then a credit to the loan payable increasing the cash we got increasing the liability and increasing the payable meaning we are increasing the amount we owe the question then is well what do we do with this five percent interest that a problem inevitably inevitably gave us within the problem it's just kind of confusing things i know it's important i know we're going to have a five percent interest somewhere why isn't it something I need to deal with at the point in time that I do the question? And if I don't need to deal with it, why did the question give us that information? Going to be a couple answers to that. Uh, one is that, of course, in real life, if we had a loan agreement and in real life with many different things, it's, it's often the case that we have more information than we need. In book problems, especially with multiple choice questions, the reverse is often the case, meaning a book problem often tests our knowledge by limiting the amount of information they give us in order to achieve a, a certain goal or objective and that can really test conceptual concepts well but in practice it's often the opposite it's often that we've got this giant loan agreement with all this stuff on it and we need to pick and choose those things that are relevant to what we need to deal with and in that sense this type of question is good if they're gonna because it's kind of related to real life if, if the question is going to give us the full loan terms at the inception of the loan in order to record a journal entry we don't really need some of the information given we don't really even need to know at that point in time what the interest rate is the fact that interest rate is five percent versus six percent versus ten percent at the inception of the loan the journal entry we record when we start the loan process doesn't make a difference now then, to, to, to think about what interest is or why that's the case, we got to think about what interest is. Now, I would, I would think of interest kind of as similar to something like rent. It's going to be, in rent, it's going to be very clear. People have a good idea of what rent is. If we have an office building and we live in it for, a, or, you know, we work in it, basically live in it, we're working in it all the time for a certain period of time, then we're going to have to pay rent on uh, the office building as we consume it as we use it so if a month has passed we pay whatever is due for that month that has passed in accordance to an agreement that we have agreed upon for the rent amount over a period of time the concept of interest is really the same thing except that we ha we're borrowing something that i guess is kind of more intangible more uh, abstract in nature we're borrowing money so rather than having the use of something very tangible, very visible, very obvious that we're using, such as a building, we're going to be using something that I guess is less obvious, is that's going to be the use of the money. If we got $10,000 and we're using that in order to help us run our business, just like us consuming the use of a space, we're consuming the use of that purchasing power. So we have, we're getting that purchasing power and that's worth something. We're getting the purchasing power today uh, in order to help generate revenue and we're paying the rent in order to allow us that purchasing power that rent is just the interest so just like if we were going to pay so much a month for for the rent on a building we're going to pay so much on the rent for the money now of course the rent on money can be a, let, a bit more difficult for us to calculate we, we're, we might not just say we're just going to pay uh the the interest at you know a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a month we're going to base it somehow on the principal 
And those terms of rent could be confusing, meaning we might pay some of the principal and interest back for if we most of us think of, of like a mortgage or a car payment, in which case we pay some of the interest and some of the principal at a monthly time period. And in that type of setup, it can actually be a little bit confusing what interest is versus what principal is because we're paying off a little bit of each as we go. The, the purest sense or the most easy comparison to psych, say a rental property would be that I'm going to borrow the $10,000, we're going to pay back the $10,000 at the end of say five years, and within that time period we're going to pay the rent monthly or pay the interest monthly, meaning we're going to pay 5% monthly and not pay any of the principal back. We're going to return the entire principal just like we would return the office building at the end of the time period at the end of five years. In that case, it would be a very straightforward comparison and we can say, okay, we're just paying for the use of that $10,000. So the, co the complexity of different loan agreements, which, which could have a good purpose, and they're not complex just to confuse people, but you know, there's a good reasons why we might want to pay off some of the principal at the same time. But the idea of paying off the principal and the, the vast ways that we can structure a, a loan agreement and the way the interest is going to be paid back and how the principal is going to be paid back really can kind of muddy the waters. It can kind of confuse us in terms of what, you know, what actually interest is. So when considering what interest is, it's going to be basically the rent on the money. When we record the interest, then we're just going to record the interest over time. Why then doesn't it happen at, at the point in time that we take out the loan? Why at the inception of the loan don't we have to deal with interest? Well, it's, it's going to be the same thing as the inception of a lease agreement. When we, when we go and say, we're going we're gonna to pay you, you know, $1,000 a month for the next five years in order to use the office building, we don't typically write the check for that month in the first day unless we prepay for the office building or we're putting down a deposit. Because why? Because we haven't used it yet. We're gonna, we, we can't record the expense under the matching principle, the matching principle or the expense recognition principle saying that we don't recognize an expense until it has been incurred in order to help us generate revenue. Uh, so in, in this case, in the case of just making an agreement, if we just signed a lease with, a, with somebody, we haven't yet incurred an expense because we haven't consumed anything. We haven't used the office building, used the space, in order to achieve the goal of revenue generation. When we first take out a loan, the same case, if we got $10,000 today, then I haven't, I don't have any interest even though I know the interest rate, the interest rate is 5%, haven't used it though. So even though I'm gonna pay 5%, just like I know I'm gonna pay $1,000 on the property, I haven't yet consumed that 5% because time has not passed. So uh, it, it's gonna take time to pass in order for that interest to accumulate over time and as it does, as we consume the use of that $10,000, that purchasing power over time in order to help us generate revenue in accordance with the matching principle, that's when the interest will take place. So when we take out the loan, the, you know, the transaction doesn't matter what the interest rate is, whether it's, you know, 5%, 10%, 100%, hopefully not, you know, 20%. It's going to be, it, we're going to record the loan as just a debit to cash and a credit to the loan balance that we got, the, the loan payable then over time we're going to have to record that interest as it is incurred in accordance with whatever policy we have. It might be that we just pay the interest only on the loan. It might be that we pay some of the interest and some of the principal, but the interest portion of it, the interest portion of any payment, just represents the use, the consumption of that money at the agreed upon price, that agreed upon price being reflected in terms of a rate, some type of interest rate that uh, we will have to calculate. So, if asked the question, why, why don't we record? Why don't we record interest at the inception of the loan? Or just the simple question is, what is interest? I would then break it down in in that format in terms of defining, you know, what is interest? How do we use interest? And why is it used? We we have interest basically to record the expense related to the consumption of the value of money in a similar way as to the, when we consume or rent the value of a property. We don't record it at the inception of the loan because we have not yet consumed the value of the money that we have received just as we have not consumed the value of 
a rental property at the signing of the lease. We record the interest expense reflecting the consumption of the use or purchasing value of that money as it has been used or purchased as time passes where we are consuming that, that purchasing power in the future, recording interest expense in the point in time that it has been incurred in order to help us generate revenue in accordance with the matching or uh, expense recognition principle.